sometimes I think to myself like, I just can't stand being black. This brown girl prom is black hair, it's everything. Like, it's snappy, it's, I can never get it done. It's so expensive to get it done. I hate women like this, y'all. You know what I mean? Like, being celibate is not working for me, you feel me? There's too many good looking niggas out here, you feel me? Like, I'm just, yo, know, I hate the color I am. I can't stand my vision sight. I can't stand going to school with all these diverse people. They don't know my struggle. I'm tired of living in Brownsville, y'all. I can't stand seeing people drunk, hanging over their potential. You know what I mean? A lot of people getting buried with their potential. I can't stand it, y'all. I got, you know what? I'm, I'm jealous of all the people who who come into my life and who make it, y'all build them up all the time and they wind up getting to these great potential, great positions and I'm just So after they figured out their problem and found a solution, we rip it up. You tell them subconscious it's gone. You no longer it's no longer a problem. And then we throw it away. I'm not sad. I'm right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You throw it away. Right. So as a man, because we did it with mostly women, right. what's your baggage? What's my baggage? What's your I gotta baggage? Pick something, pick something up. Pick something out. Oh, wow. It's something in it? It's something, it's mad stuff in there, but oh, just right. dig deep for some paper. <laughs> If you may try to speak over the, the music and the noise. All right. Got you. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Baggage. Anxiety. Hold on. The idea that I can't go to school. I believe that's what it says. <laughs> The idea that, I mean, I don't want to mess up like sure. that. Yeah. Man, just the idea I can't go to school, that's, that's it. That's what it says. Oh, wow. Wow. And it's small, too, and that big right. paper. Wow, um, small-minded people. <laughs> wow, no, but the thing is, that is kind of crazy because my whole perspective has changed a lot. I'm supposed to look at the camera. No, you can't. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I would say... It is something that I do have a lot of anxiety about and that I had about because I was kind of forced into going to college. You get what I'm saying? So it was like I didn't feel I had purpose there at that time. But then at the same time with all of the like knowledge building I do and things of that nature and then being so against the system, I kind of was biased towards school in general. Whereas now I see where it's needed and effective. But as long as it's part of your purpose and your path, you get what I'm saying? Yes. Like it is, it is a, a tool, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. It is an, it's a necessary tool as well. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's also good to, it's not. Life is ongoing learning. You're learning every day, mm -hmm. so you can never learn too much. Mm -hmm. But also just knowing that everywhere that you go has purpose for a reason. Like you, there's no mistakes. You get what I'm saying? No coincidences. Sure. So. You know, I mean, I definitely see why I was there at that time, but now for me, the second time around when I do plan on going back in, you know, that is my solution, I guess. You know, I I know to go into school now with a purpose, opposed to just doing it just because my parents are saying, like, this is the thing to do, the cliche way, you know what I'm saying? So now, you know, yeah, so I guess that's my solution. Yeah, so go ahead and get rid of that baggage. Right, thing, get know? rid of it, right. Word. Also, for what I want to do, it grants me more freedom yeah. because I like working within the youth, yes. working in education. And it's like now I'm hitting a brick wall. I mean, I, I slide the loopholes like crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I find my loopholes, but I can have ownership once I have that. You yes. know? So, yeah, let me rip it up. Show the camera, show the camera. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah. let's go. <laughs> make the, let me see you make that three pointer though. <laughs> Yes, I mean, you know, that was kind of um, one of the things I learned from previous relationships. It was an ongoing thing, but it's kind of like, when I think I'm right, or I know I'm right, I'm right. You know, it is like no telling me anything, yeah. you know, but um, that was one thing I was carrying a lot because I'm not, the only way I'm used to releasing is through my artistry, through my craft. I wasn't used to expressing myself and a lot stems from home you know what i'm saying you know usually like when men try to express themselves about their issues and show some form of vulnerability you're viewed as weak especially in our community you know what i'm saying it's frowned upon you know to say you know i have fears or this is how i feel about that you know what i'm saying but as far as baggage i mean definitely that's something i mean i would say most men do it they just don't admit it that they have baggage you get what i'm saying yeah. and, you know I, I hold on to stuff and that's something that I'm conscious of now, so I'm aware of it. I try not to do it, but yeah. I, I'd say our communities do it to us, though. I, I say, you know, I mean, once you're aware that you're responsible for it, but I mean, you gotta think of growing up in the hood, it's like, you can't, I'm not gonna say you can't, because that's something that needs to be changed, but it tends to happen a lot. Mm -hmm. You can't, like, go to your homie outside and be like, look, yo, I mean, what's something that you can be holding on to, for example, like, say like a girl cheated on you, you know what I'm saying? Like a bad relationship, you know, encounter or whatnot. That changed my perspective for like my next few relationships. But I never had someone to open up to about it or I wasn't aware of anybody, you know, I could go to about it. And it's kind of like you invite other people into your hell now. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so that, but Think about how many young men do. I just, I'm, you know, all this misogynistic stuff going on and cheating and things of that nature with men thinking that's cool now. You know, but that's really just men holding on to baggage. You know Woo! what I'm saying? That's what it is. Can you say that loud and proud? Yes, man. <laughs> Please say that loud. The, the current state of, of how our men is treating women and things of that nature is, you know, them holding on to baggage. Holding on to baggage, things that they seem happen to their mother. Things that has happened to them, their lack of understanding, their lack of knowledge, you know what I'm saying? And lack of love for self, you know? And all of these different things are, you know, baggage that we're traveling with. And as I'm saying it, it's funny because it's like I'm reflected on myself as I say it. It does wonders like when somebody asks you when you come in for the day. Like, how was your day? Or when you leaving out somebody say, well, have a great day, be safe. You know what I'm saying? Or be blessed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Something of that nature. J just to say, like, how words have power. A lot of times, like, that's what I learned from working with the youth. Why they look forward to coming back after school every day. Because once they come in, I want to know how was your day. I want to know. And just the fact that you can feel that someone cares, that genuineness, that does a great deal. So, going back to holding baggage, when you don't really feel like the people you... You all comfortable with expressing yourself with even care about it. You get what I'm saying? It's one thing just to talk to deaf ears, you know what I'm saying? But when it was just like you sat in there, you know, it was like a, a somewhat of a fair exchange to one, but you understood where I was coming from, you know what I'm saying? And then it was like a low, like, huh, like I right, somebody understood me, you know? And a lot of what's going on is just like people feeling misunderstood. What is what is your sight or is your insight on relationships right. and purpose? As far as relationships, that's a good question. As far as relationships, I, I feel as a mass, and it's actually because of you know a couple of things that I came across and you know some studying and research that I did into it. And like I said, mastery of love is one of those things. But our whole perception of love is messed up. You get what I'm saying? And it's like it's kind of like you know all the systematic stuff or whatever. But it's kind of more of a it's a misunderstanding, you know? And one of my main things that I learned lately is that, you know, you have to love self first in order for that to project. Like, I just was telling a female this on the train last night, she just started venting, and I was like, basically, you have to, you have to be a queen in order to attract your king. So I have to see that you're loving yourself in order for me to respect you that way, you know what I'm saying? It's either it's gonna scare me away or it's gonna attract me to you more. You get what I'm saying? Because me seeing you loving yourself makes me want to love myself more.
Yeah. <laughs>